Welcome to the SaaS Global Forum 2020 presentation, Unlock the Business Value of IoT with Analytics. My name is DJ Penix, and I'm the president of Pinnacle Solutions. Today, we live in a very unusual time with social distancing and regional and national restrictions on work essential guidelines. With the advancement of IoT, or Internet of Things, Businesses must be proactive and ahead of the curve with utilizing technologies that keep them profitable, keep them competitive, and in some cases, simply keep the doors open to running their business. We wanted to show you a very simple use case of building an IoT device and show how it can be integrated with the powerful SaaS Analytics for IoT solution. Our presentation today will hopefully inspire you to think about how IoT and analytics can help your business thrive in today's difficult global economy. Thank you. The Internet of Things is an emerging topic of technical, social, and economic significance. Consumer products, durable goods, cars and trucks, industrial and utility components, sensors, and other everyday objects are being combined with Internet connectivity and powerful data analytic capabilities that promise to transform the way we work, live, and play. According to the InternetSociety.org, Projections for the impact of IoT on the internet and economy are impressive, with some anticipating as many as 100 billion connected IoT devices and a global economic impact of more than $11 trillion by the year 2025. In many ways, manufacturers were already doing IoT-like initiatives over 50 years ago with the utilization of programmable logic controllers, or PLCs but they were really restricted by the limitations of the computers and boards that were built into their equipment. Many companies today still have equipment that predates PLCs or even predates World War II. These assets may still be incredibly valuable to the organization. However, it might be deemed too expensive to replace or to even retrofit the machines to update them with modern sensor technology. And even if an organization is currently set up for data collection mechanisms via their PLCs, they may be outdated, or they may not collect today's current sensor metrics. Also, many systems are often set up to be batched for data transformation, stored in traditional relational databases, and then scheduled for analysis at a later time. To make things worse, these siloed data repositories are often not integrated with other key business data assets, such as their supplier, customer, marketing, R&D, warranty, or any other corporate databases. Today we have a much better way. A better way to get the data real-time, not close to real-time. A better way to get the data integrated with other corporate assets. And a better way to integrate real-time machine learning and artificial intelligence into your systems. Many people think that IoT is only for manufacturers. That is simply not the case. There are many relevant use cases and applications of IoT across multiple industry verticals. For example, connected retail and hospitality are building applications to connect their guests real-time to offer better experiences and to ensure, ensure higher return rates. Connected insurance is using image classification to process claims faster, more efficiently, and to give their customers a significantly better experience. Connected healthcare and life sciences are using IoT to offer predictive staff alerting so that high-risk patients can be helped sooner or even before an incident occurs. And there are many other use cases in all kinds of industries. I would challenge you to look closely at your business and your competition. What are the ways that they are using IoT to keep their colleagues, their customers, their employees, their executives, and even their shareholders informed about the key processes and metrics within the organization. This is an example data and analytics workflow for many typical organizations. The items in blue are likely components that you have within your organization. Traditional enterprise assets of data inputs are fed through a staging area where ETL processes build your factory data models. From there, you can do data selection and exploration which event eventually filter out into analysis, which may include visualization, decisioning, and alerting. 
One of the benefits of SaaS analytics for IoT is that we can integrate real-time streaming of data within your existing processes. Reflected in green, the IoT components allow you to see data real-time in custom dashboards, as well as integrate the output streaming data within your existing fa factory data model and data exploration mechanisms. In our demo today, we're going to show you an example of building your own custom Internet of Things device. Using a Raspberry Pi and a Sense Hat accessory, we can detect various measurements such as vibrations, temperature, pressure, and accelerometer XYZ coordinates. We can stream the data through the Wi-Fi network, send it up to the Amazon cloud, process with SaaS event stream processing, which then can be displayed in custom real-time dashboards. The Raspberry Pi microcomputer was initially released in 2012 and has become a popular go-to hardware device for do-it-yourselfers and techies alike. Our initial development was on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. If you search online at your favorite electronics retailer, you can find the boards for around $40 to $50 but you can also find starter kits that include other components and accessories to get you running quickly for around $85. The Raspberry Pi itself does not have any built-in sensors, but there are available add-on boards called Sense Hats. The Sense Hat we utilize can be found for around $35, and it includes an LED matrix display and sensors for an accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, barometer, temperature, and humidity. But there are many other sensor boards that you can add on to detect other things such as light, sound, GPS, a video camera module, and even more. A sturdy case will keep the components secure. Most starter kits will include a case, but there are many options available. This simple case has a clear plastic window so you can see the LED matrix display, which can be useful if you want your IoT application to report feedback to the end user. A simple micro USB cable can power the device. Again, most starter kits will provide the power cables for you. Finally, we purchased some optional battery power sources. This is ideal for carrying the Raspberry Pi device to remote locations or hard to reach places that might have electrical power limitations. We have found that batteries we purchased will keep charged for only around four to six hours. Still, this is a handy option for some quick IoT experiments and proof of concepts. Putting everything together, we get our ShakeBox IoT device. So here's our final ShakeBox device. You can see here I've got it in the case. I've got a clear plastic cover. I'll go ahead and attach that. I've also got on the back, I've got some Velcro uh, for the battery supply. I kind of like to do that just so that it can kind of stick together and be a little bit more mobile. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the micro USB uh, power supply and then hit the battery button here and we'll go ahead and boot up the device. Uh, you can see that there are some LED flashing displays here. This is nice in the event that you actually might want to put some user feedback. We actually did some countdowns uh, so that we could tell when the uh, device was actually booting up. You can do other messaging if it's unable to connect to the Wi-Fi and, and so forth. So I'm going to let this boot up here uh, a minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch the... Uh, custom web interface that we developed. And again, I'm going to hold this in my hand here uh, while we're working. On the lower section of the display, this is actually ShakeBox number two, which one of our co-developers actually has uh, remotely. We can see that there's some data streaming in through there. On the top, uh, you can see on the, the drop down, this is for ShakeBox one, which actually is the device that we have. And the system did just come online. So you can see now that we're getting real time display and data. I'm going to go ahead and set this down now on my desk. I've got another camera here that we can uh, display so that you can see it. And then we'll take a look at some of the features on the dashboard itself. 
So when I set the uh, shake box down on its side here, you can see that things kind of stabilize a little bit. Uh, things become a little bit more flat. Uh, I can actually twist it and turn it, and you can see the pie chart uh, as, as it's rotating so that we can see how it's rolling and um, you know having the effect on that with, with the twists and, twists and turns. Um, on the left-hand side, we're seeing approximately 180 seconds of uh, trend. Uh, that's nicer if you want to see a longer window, we can customize that. Whereas in the middle, it's more of a real time on a second by second basis. You can see the effect of it kind of coming through rapidly. So a use case on this for the vibration may actually be one around uh, putting a device, a sensor device on top of heavy equipment or machinery, uh, maybe in a transportation vehicle and you're trying to detect if there's excessive vibration. Um, that may either damage some goods, and we'll talk a little bit later where it may actually give us an early indication around maybe some machine failure. So some uh, ideas around predictive asset maintenance. On the right-hand side here, we're seeing some other metrics that we have the ability to, to collect. We're doing some calculated values. We're collecting the min and the max for the altitude, the barometric pressure. Um, on the right here, we actually don't have the GPS module plugged into this particular device, so we're not able to see GPS uh, statistics, but we have some other devices that will allow us uh, to show that. We've actually got some mins and maxes, uh, some ranges here. We can see at the top the total number of our records that are being collected along with um, those that are exceeding the, um, the, the green threshold, the yellow threshold, and the red threshold. Again, we can determine those to see how supervisors might want to be alerted if we do get those excessive vibrations. And you can see as I kind of shake that up now, our counts are, are increasing so that that can give us an indication. Of course, we can do anything on the back end with stats, uh, with SAS and some analytics on that as, as we need to as well. Uh, the little heartbeats, uh, we have an ability to determine whether the uh, device is actually connecting to the ESP because, again, even if the machine is down, it's still important for us to know that we've got connectivity. Um, that way the operators know whether it's maybe a, a, an issue with the IoT device or maybe it's an issue uh, with the connection stream, the Internet, or uh, something else along the way. So that's the custom dashboard. Again, this can be uh, customized for whatever sensor data that you guys are collecting, whether it's the Raspberry Pi or other devices. Um, I did also want to mention and remind that this uh, custom interface is actually developed and deployed up on Amazon Cloud. And so it does not have to be. This can be located at wherever your SaaS footprint is at on a custom web. Uh, hosted environment or Amazon, we wanted to demonstrate that it's actually possible to do in the cloud and, and it actually can work very well uh, indeed. We've got a metric here, we're, sh we're just showing a little above four records per second. Again, keep in mind what's happening here on the device itself is that uh, this has a built-in Wi-Fi uh, on the Raspberry Pi. It's connecting through the Wi-Fi. Um, I'm actually working from home remote today. It's going up through the gateway, going up into Amazon Cloud. Uh, we've got SAS Event Stream Processor running up on the cloud, and then it is feeding up into the custom dashboard. So what appears to be a lot of movement is actually incredibly responsive and in real time. So again, this is significantly better than the near real time type batch analysis that many organizations are using in, in their manufacturing or other processes. This is the previous slide I showed earlier with an example data and analytics workflow. The orange boxes now show some advanced capabilities of SAS Analytics for IoT by integrating modeling into our process. Once the models are developed, we can even deploy the code inside the IoT device or gateway, thus allowing for real-time modeling. Why would we want to do this? Well, here's one example. Using a SAS procedure called Support Vector Data Description, or SVDD, we can address common use cases such as fraud detection, equipment health monitoring, and process control, for example. Using this type of model, we can identify outliers in our incoming streaming data. 
The above diagram shows an illustration of normal data points bound within a model driven by hypersphere reflected by white circle dots. The black dots outside of the hypersphere are considered outliers and are typically gen and are typically events of strong interest as the data stream flows in from the IoT device. Here's an example SVDD output chart that can quickly and effectively demonstrate how, to, how a turbofan degrades over its lifespan. The red reference lines have not been drawn based on a hard-coded value, but rather determined by the model creation of the SVDD procedure. The SVDD threshold would not only be different for each process within an organization, but it could also be different for every machine and even within different spots and part locations on the machine. This is certainly a situation where a one-size-fits-all model would not be appropriate, and SAS will allow you to manage and scale thousands of different models for each IoT device. So building upon our initial ShakeBox, Let's go ahead and build a ShakeBox 2.0 that utilizes the SVDD model. With the release of the Raspberry Pi 4, we are now ready to explore the features of installing the SAS Event Stream Processing application on the ShakeBox itself. We can also deploy a custom SVDD vibration model that we described in the previous slide. This is a common use case for IoT edge processing. It eliminates the need to pass the entire stream of raw data back to the SAS server for analysis. Instead, it can run the model real-time on the ShakeBox. This will greatly reduce the amount of data transfer and increase performance, especially if you need to scale hundreds or even thousands of devices in the field. You can find the Raspberry Pi 4 boards for around $45 to $50, but we utilize the same Sense Hat board as well as the various charging and battery options. We also purchased a more industrial aluminum case. So here you can see a screenshot of the SAS ESP Studio. This is a drag and drop interface that allows us to hook and connect all of the various input streams from sensors and other devices. And we also utilize this for communication with the RabbitMQ and processing all of the data. Uh, this sample workflow was utilized for ShakeBox version 1, uh, but you can also see some other icons on the workflow where we had actually implemented and deployed some of the models, uh, specifically using for the vibration for the SVDD, and we deployed that in ShakeBox version 2.0. Uh, the details of the uh, ESP Studio are not, uh, there's not enough time for today to go into that. That will be a topic of a future presentation, but we do have some details in the white paper that we had submitted there at the Global Forum. So feel free to reach out, look for there, or reach out and contact us if you need some more uh, details on that. One of the things that I wanted to, to highlight here, um, I'm gonna flip back over to the uh, dashboard. This is gonna look very similar to the dashboard that you saw previously, but there is one subtle difference. If you notice in the address bar, we've actually got an address of 10.10.41. And what that is, is that we're actually running the web services or the web server on the ShakeBox device itself. Rather than uh, reaching out to Amazon Cloud for the web services, we're running it here on the ShakeBox itself. I can flip over to the camera here. Uh, and again, the ShakeBox is very similar to the previous um, ShakeBox that we had. It's got the more modern case. I actually hooked it up into a physical cable this time instead of a battery, uh, but didn't need to. We could still use the battery on that. But you can see the real-time display on the dashboard as well. Very sim similar on the results. But the difference on here now is that all of the processing of the Raspberry Pi is happening on the device itself. And so as we get the data, it's processing it internally through the ESP that was deployed on the box. It's then sending all the data and the information to the web server, the serverless web on the ShakeBox device itself. So it's all nice and clean. We could still, if we wanted to, when there are significant events, uh, such as thresholds that are exceeded, we could shoot those up to either the server, the home base, or to some other alert, messaging, text message, so on. But what this means is we could significantly reduce the amount of data throughput that needs to be sent to the cloud because the device itself could be doing all of the work. 
It doesn't have to be on the Raspberry Pi device. In fact, as the more devices that you get deployed out, it's often a strategy to deploy ESP on the edge at the gateway side of things, or the router side. So it can handle it, and all of the you know, computer processing power that those devices may have, we can steer all of the data through there, still deploy all the ESP and the, and the various models. So you can, you can see from here, we can actually do pretty significant scalability um, with being able to deploy ESP either on the device, on the gateway, or on the server itself. In many cases, customers may want to do a combination of all of the above. The last thing that I wanted to point out here was that the models and now the thresholds for the minim minimums and the maximums for each of the various groups are actually now de determined by the model itself. So what, what we had done is we had set the shake box on the, the table and we simulated what normal process and normal run was and then we simulated a vibration for the particular location that the box was in and then we could simulate what's out of the normal and then really kind of define what those thresholds uh, would be. Again, where this is important is because if we were to set this device on say a tractor trailer versus maybe setting it up on a compressor, the models would be very, very different because um, they would determine what is normal for each of the various different scenarios. And so that is why it's important that we can use a modeling technique versus setting up hard-coded values for the thresholds. So that's the big difference here with ShakePoint, ShakeBox 2.0. I hope this demonstration showed you the capabilities and power of utilizing SAS Analytics for IoT. While we demonstrated a simple use case with the Raspberry Pi, you can start building your solutions with just about any sensor or device available in the market. I want to thank you again for watching this video. Please feel free to contact me or my other team members for more information. We'd be happy to discuss how you can unlock your business value of IoT analytics.